one of the things that's happening these days is we've been talking a lot about yet another levy, yet yeah. another property tax proposal by the county commissioners. This makes number six in the last ten years. They wanted to actually have another one, a, a, a taxing district, So, but this is number six in 10 years. I've been here for a dozen years, and when I first got here, I was voting for these things. I voted for them at least two or three times. I live in the city in Grants Pass, and I thought, well, okay, I want to have safety as much as anybody else. And after a while, I, I said, no, wait a minute, they're bringing this back again. I got voted against. The people said, we don't want this. And, and at what point do you say, wait a minute, we've done this enough. We're doing it every two years or so. At what point do you listen to the public and say, they might be wrong, but they voted? Right. <clears throat> and a lot, a lot of them, like I remember in 2008, there was a two-tier taxing district proposal based on the Deschutes County uh, plan that they had. And it was defeated, I believe, uh, more than 60% of the population voted no. So they keep thinking that, you know, oh, the, this time, you know, we'll, we'll advertise it and, you know, get it all presented to the people in a very unique way. So they'll have to vote yes on it. Well, I got news for them. The last five times they put it on the ballot, the last five times it has been voted no. The main reason I'm <clears throat> voting no this time, and I voted no last time, which was Less than a year ago? Less than two years Less ago? Last May. Last May. Yeah, that was less. The reason I'm doing it is I actually want, I think as most people do, our law enforcement people in general to have enough money. Of course I do. I'm not an idiot. Yeah. Uh, but the problem is that there's no guarantee, there's no guarantee that they're actually going to get the money. Yes, this measure, 1749, the way it's written up, it says it may go to these, these law enforcement services. But, but, but they put this list, this impressive list yeah. of places where it may go. And you read that and you say, I want all of those things. Right. But, but you've got to watch out for that yeah. three-letter word. Because it may not go to them. And there's no... Uh, uh, look, the... the CFO presented to Chief the Chief Financial Officer. Yeah, the Chief Financial Officer of Josephine County presented to the uh, BCC. Board of County Commissioners. Yep. Um, and also Cheryl Walker, who is a current commissioner, presented this information to the Grants Pass City Council uh, recently. And there was no breakdown of what money is going to what. They even asked department. her. The mayor asked her, mm -hmm. "Won't you? Don't you think that this will pass more easily, or you'll have a better chance if you tell people how the money is going to be spent?" Yeah. And her answer was, "Well, it, it's just like well, we've tasked the but the, the departments uh, heads to come up, you know, for the nor normal budget process that's going to be starting. Baloney, you know, they they don't have to pass the budget until I guess it's uh, in June. You know, the fiscal year starts June first. July 1st? July 1st, yeah. Right. And so there's no accountability. There's no um, guarantee that what we're going to be voting on is actually going to provide services like they say it's, it's going to be provided. They've even admitted that the departments have not even begun to think of what they would do with the money. What? The, it, and, and it's <laughs> questionable. You know, how did they come up with this as $1.48 rate if they don't even know you know what the departments need well uh, look it, it probably sounds too critical oh well you're just looking at the small picture the problem is that i want these things for law enforcement also mm -hmm. but with this gang that's in there at the moment there's no guarantees that it really will right. they actually said in a meeting that i taped we're not going twice we're not going to guarantee that even a penny is going to go to any of these things on the list. Now, wait a minute. If people knew that, they would. I'm not going to write a blank check to these guys. Right. Well, you can trust us, but we're telling you, not even a penny may go. Hey, yeah. I, I'm not going to vote for that then. And then, you know, to a lot of the departments, they take out 10% for the internal services. Yes. Part. And so, you know, I don't know if people know that. I that don't think that. Well, okay, internal services fund. 
there are going to be departments in any county, in any government, where they don't bring in money. It's not like uh, the clerk's office that brings in money all the time. They're competing with private enterprises some ways, and I don't like that, but that's another story, another time. When they bring in money, what they do is they share it with other departments. They take all that money and they dump it into a general fund, and the general fund then then funds things like uh, you need to have photocopies made and you need to have internet connections and all that and because though the groups that do that the internet people they're not self-funding and so you put it into that and everybody shares yeah. it it's that not makes sense. it's not the ge call the general fund though that's something the so general fund is where the money comes from to go into the ISF yeah okay Right. right. And so the answer from the commissioners is, well, now, hold on a second. You don't want the sheriff to be able to make a photocopy? Of course I'm not saying that. But if, the, if all the money from the sheriff that's put into the internal services fund, if that all comes right back to him, well, then he wouldn't put it in there in the first place. What happens is some of that money is going to go to sheriff's photocopies, but some of it's also going to go to park photocopies and and uh, photocopies for the people who are uh, cleaning up outside and everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's ten cents out of every dollar. Yes, and it goes towards um, travel expenses for the commissioners to go to Washington D.C. You know what are they doing on the weekends? In oh, Washington, even better than that. Here's the big one. The people who are saying that it's all kosher, there's no problem with this, why, what's the matter with you, don't you really understand, I'm so surprised, you've been to every meeting, Matteo Matthews, you don't understand anything. But the people who are saying that are the Chief Financial Officer and the Board of County Commissioners. Now, where does the salary and the office staff for the Chief Financial Officer and the Board of County Commissioners come from? The ISF fund. So, so, so why would they say this? Well, again, that's where they get their money. Absolutely. And I have real objections to, like our CFO, she's making almost over $97,000. That's more the, than county commissioners. Yeah, the commissioners, when I was in there, it was 73. See, the county commissioners are elected. You know, if they want to make an a, a extreme amount of money, even in this county, well, that's up to the voters, I guess, but they don't get to vote on the chief financial officer. Right. Right, and she get got cola raises. Oh, Cost whatever. of living allowance. Yeah, and you know they they increase. You know they you know because oh the union people got it. They got cola raises. Well, the non unions have to get it, and oh you know the contract employee Rosemary Paget, you know our CFO has to get it too. So the thing is, is what bothers me most is that the majority of the expenses of the county are 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 for employees, salaries, benefits, and retirements. And you know what? I don't think one dime has been cut from any of those things. But, but they'll say, now wait a minute now, okay, now you want this stuff for safety, and we give you our solemn promise. Look, it's written down on a piece of paper. Yeah, it's just written on a piece of paper that they wrote. It must go toward that. Well, already we know the 10 cents out of every dollar cannot possibly go to that. Okay, mm -hmm. so right there we got them on this. Okay, mm -hmm. you haven't been telling us the truth. Oh, every single dollar will go. Who says that? The Chief Financial Officer and the Board of County Commission. Every single dollar, and as Cheryl Walker recently put it, and if we don't do that, then we ought to be driven out of office. Well, you already have proven you're not doing it. Okay, right. but let's suppose that they said, as they, as they have, well, you can trust us. You can trust us. We're definitely going to spend this money correctly. Tell them about the six hundred thousand dollars, would you please? Oh man, six hundred thousand, six hundred thousand from the general fund for what? A piece of software. One piece of software. One piece of software. For the assessor's office. One piece of software. I mean, you know something about software. One piece. One piece of software costs. It just. Uh, and not only that, only one department. Yeah, for only one department, because the other departments uh, can't talk with their oh, software. Oh, yeah, we, they just admitted this. This six hundred thousand dollar piece of software, which also costs sixty thousand dollars a year just to keep it running. Well, it seems as if maybe they bought the wrong software because it doesn't talk with any other department software. This is why they're saying, well, maybe this isn't why they're saying, but this is an indication of, oh, we're spending your money so wisely, why, just trust us, we'll do the same thing that we did with 
that assessor software, I don't think they're going to use that as an example. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it never ends. Even the dedicated money doesn't really go to what Oh, they said, oh, no, wait, wait. It's dedicated, you see. It's all dedicated. Just like when we go into the weekly business session. You've probably seen some of these on our tapes. Go to the weekly business session. It's held inside a, an auditorium, the Ann Basker Auditorium. Not Ambassador or some people. It's mm -hmm. Ann Basker Auditorium. And that room you're going to have to have people come in and clean it up, those kinds of things, of course, ISF, the Internal Services Fund, and that's why they're vacuuming it. I think that the sheriff, for one, might say, you know, keeping the carpet clean and the Ann Basker is not necessarily keeping us safe because you're going to trip over the dust. Okay, all right, so there's a dedicated fund that only can go toward buying equipment, just equipment. It can't be services or anything else. And for years, the chief financial officer, aided by the county commissioners, has been misspending this money and spending it on services, everything else but yeah. pieces of equipment. Oh, well, no, that's okay. And when we talked with legal counsel about it, Steve Rich, he said, well, the state's not enforcing the law. Really? Yeah. That's the advice that we're and, getting and from our chief, yeah, from and, our legal yeah. counsel? And they did, I believe it was in 2008, they researched what the PEG account could be used for. PEG it. stands for Public Education Government, and mm -hmm. it's about our cable TV mm -hmm. public access channel, which is supposed to be for telling us about government, and also supposed to be for telling us about schools, what are they doing, mm -hmm. uh, what games are they playing, that kind of stuff, and also for public access to do things like this. Yeah, it's, it's not so much telling us about it, it's giving the public, um, the schools, and the government the ability to show shows, programming uh, on a cable channel. Even if you think that this is both, I don't know why you're watching this if you think this, but even if you think, well, this is a complete waste, I mean, we're doing this for free, obviously. Mm -hmm. Even if you think that's the case, what, you don't want any of the schools to be able to show their physics students building a bridge or the little kids singing I'm a Little Teapot or any of the nice things that are happening, the, 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 the choir sing. It, wouldn't that be nice? How about Boatnik? Boatnik is the biggest thing in Josephine County and Grants Pass mm -hmm. that we do all year. We've videotaped it, but nobody else has. Why hasn't it ended up on this in this on these peg channels? Right. Why isn't that even well, there? You know, the, the I've heard one county commissioner pervert it, saying, "Well, this is just the government's ability to educate the public about what's happening in government." I mean, All right, that uh, isn't a uh, uh, you know a perversion. Yeah. Go ahead, educate us. Tell us why you're continuing to break the law. I can say that it's the truth. Why are you continuing to break the law and misspend this money? It's such a small amount of money, we've been told. Okay, yep. it should be easy to clean up then. Yep. That, that's what got us really involved with, with politics from the very beginning, True. from the year 2000. You know, so it's been going on 13 years. You know, just spend the money appropriately. You know, take your dedicated money and spend it the way it's supposed to be. And it was a constant battle, and it's still not being spent properly. Well, they, so, they cut off television and just put back on and just recently and they cut that off and they said well the equipment wasn't working right there was nothing wrong with the equipment because we were both volunteering she was doing yeah. it as a county commissioner we were both volunteering to run the equipment for free so it wouldn't count cost the county anything now in the daily courier well it's not really daily anymore but in the courier they said we've got to pull the plug on this because that Dale Matthews is charging us a small fortune wasn't charging anything, anything. for it. That's and true. so when you have no newspaper, I say no newspaper because they didn't even call, they were writing an article about me, but they never even talked to me. Right. And the, the most recent thing was the editorial slamming, you know, me, who, when I was a commissioner, wanted to give everybody the ability to speak <laughs> at least for three minutes, for their three minutes, and on any topic, any business. As they do in the have. city. The city yeah. does it already. Yeah, if there's there's some kind of resolution or order that, that you know we were going to pass, um, the public should have 
the right to have three minutes to, to talk and speak about that issue. They might say something smart. And, they might say something that would be helpful. And, you know, they said how horrific it was that, you know, I don't know, my meetings went long. They went an hour and a half or, you know, they were normally 50 minutes and then they were, I don't know, 120 or something like well, that. Well, she said, we've set aside between 9 and 12. And so maybe we ought to use that time. And yes. they really got up to, yes. you're threatening us with three-hour meetings. Yes. So tell them what happened right after you left office. Well, you know, when I left office, the meetings were just as long, but they were blather from the commissioners rather than, than giving the public the opportunity to speak. So, you know, my meetings went maybe three hours and everybody got a chance to speak. Their meetings are going three hours and it's just them talking, blather. So these are the people that were complaining that the meetings were too long, mm -hmm. and now they're filling up the space just themselves. Yeah, and and I, uh, Dennis Roller, the who wrote the editorial, said that I gave it to just my special friends and everything. It wasn't the truth. Everybody had the opportunity to speak um, at the meetings, and that's how it should be. It should be, you know, the the public being able to come to a weekly business session and uh, and voicing their their concerns to the Board of County Commissioners. You want public participation, right? You want openness and transparency, right? Supposedly. Yeah. And so if the people come and they take the time to drive in from Cave Junction and they're going to speak, yeah. you're going to tell them, no, we're not going to let you speak? I mean, what? give them three minutes. I, I mean, know. how much out of your day is that? Would you just listen to them without interrupting them, please. Right. Or cutting them off in mid-sentence. Oh, I, I, as I off. was told, I already know what you're going to say, Mr. Matthews. You can sit down. You already know what I'm going to say? So what had happened when the next time I got up, I said, okay. <laughs> Show me what I'm going to say. What am I going to say? <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It really is disturbing that that more and more restrictions are being placed on the public in, in Josephine County. What country now. is this? Really? I know. It's just it's they're taking away our, our free speech at the you know our, our ability to dialogue with our commissioners has you know gone. Oh, oh but they'll allow dialogue, but only with their friends. Yeah, it, when they they're some, saying something positive about the commissioners, and then just real recently we had an issue come up and. Um, the commissioners went on the Cajo radio show, and they've always had call-ins the, the last half hour of this hour show. For years and years and years. Yeah. Well, they broke policy because they don't really want to dialogue with the public, or they don't want to ask questions. You well, there was the, particularly controversial questions. things that were coming up, and everybody was bringing this up at the weekly business session for two weeks in a row, mm -hmm. and they knew on Cajo that this was going to be the dominant conversation piece but they didn't talk about that story at all mm -hmm. they went over another story twice mm -hmm. yeah, oh what are the well, liaison, liaison, assi position. liaison assignments oh, well God. we need to know who who talks with public works uh, do you care who talks with public <laughs> works but they oh let's get that straight yeah, let's spend so the next 10 minutes talking about liaison, liaison assignments position. from several months ago because yeah, right. you certainly couldn't talk about <laughs> oh I don't know the news yeah right it's funny well, I don't know. We've kind of got off the topic oh, of the levy. Oh, the, 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 the levy. Know. Right. Okay. Okay. You're right. Right. So what are some of the things about the levy? Well, to me, the number one thing is we have no assurance at all that the money is going to go where they say it's going to go. And, and what really disturbs me is Josephine County has a contract with the federal government. It's the 1937 ONC Act. And ONC stands for Oregon and California. It was railroad. related to a railroad mm -hmm. where we sort of got railroaded, where the, where the federal government took this land and made it available to that railroad that yeah. never used it correctly and promised us we're taking this land. We're taking so the management of the land. We will yeah. always, always, always pay you for your loss of income from that land. Right. Well? It, it was supposed to be for our, our um, sustainability of the county. Well, the, the, that would federal, be nice. the federal government is reneging on that. They are. And they're breaking the contract. And, and 
uh, historically, I think it was in 2008, we got $12 million. So that's our portion of the pie. And so my whole thing has been, you know, okay, look, federal government, if you, I, I understand you don't have enough money, okay, you owe us $12 million, either give us $12 million in cash, if you don't like that option, give us um, the ability to take $12 million of product out of these forests, um, either in timber or mineral wealth. Um, just as a side note, um, Josephine County has 30% uh, of all the placer mines in Oregon, right here in our own little county. So we do have a lot of minerals here. Or if you don't like those two options, get out a map and draw a line, give us $12 million worth of land each year, and we will manage it um, uh, better than the federal government can for the sustainability of our county. We have a contract with them. Right. And I can't get the, the counties, to, to the Board of County Commissioners or the City Council to say, look, here are three options for you. You're reneging on the contract. They are. Uh, you know, but what they're doing instead is the BCC is saying, well, the federal government's, you know, reneging on its contract. You property owners have to come cough up the, 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 the 12 million, the difference. And they're blaming the property owners for not paying enough in taxes because our tax rate is relatively low, 58 the, cents per thousand. But the reason that people moved here in the first place is because they wanted to buy low priced properties and yeah. have low taxes. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's definitely um, cost less. The cost of living living in southern Oregon is so much cheaper than living in like the Portland area. But again, of course we need to have, to have um, Law enforcement, of course we do. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly possible, you might disagree with me, that people are not paying enough to keep their law enforcement going. I can understand that. But if the money is going to be spent, I am not going to write them a blank check, no matter how bad the situation is, and let them spend it. They're going to take that money and throw it into a big bucket called the general fund and then sort it out afterwards. Yeah. This is not the way to do no, this. No, it's not. It's... it's it's really not. Well, see, so what I do is, and what we monitor is, I go to all of the county commissioners' meetings, more meetings than they go to, of their mm -hmm. own meetings, and I videotape these things, so I see, I see and record them saying the most extraordinary things. For example, the chief financial officer just made a recent announcement at one of these little backroom meetings, sparsely attended, but I heard them. She said, even if this levy does not pass, we still can maintain the current services that we have in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Now, some people are going to say, and, well, everybody knows that, but not everybody does know No, that. and they said they actually, without the levy and without the ONC money, that they, they have, I believe it was $347,000 more in next year's budget than they had this year. So they actually have more money set aside for next year's budget than they had uh, you know, to operate this year. So, you know, they want to increase the level of services, and I don't think the people really understand that. You know, they're just, you know, it's going to be, I can just see it, it's going to be this this scare tactic, so oh, you're not going to have this, you're not going to have that, it's going to be horrible, there's, you know, crime running around and everything. Well, you know something, the people in the county are not hardly getting any services anyways. Um, and why would we increase our property taxes um, from 58 cents a thousand to over two dollars per, per thousand and still get no services? The sheriff has already said this is not going to be enough money. He's already announced that it's not enough money. He's not working with the county commissioners on this project. Yeah. But they're saying, but it. The problem with this is when it came up last time, the county commissioners said, "Well, uh, you can trust us. Every single dollar will go toward this well, uh, the, yeah. toward public safety. Toward public safety. Mm -hmm. The sheriff would not confirm that, and one other commissioner wouldn't confirm it." Now, wait a minute. I asked him at a public meeting, is that true? Crickets in the corner. Would not answer that. And this one's less money. This levy is a dollar forty-eight per thousand. And there's a group in town that is actually preparing now, they make it obvious to everybody, 
they're preparing for the next levy, even if this one passes. They admit that it's not enough money, it, and so this is just the first of at least two. It's not the next levy. They want a permanent taxing district, and they're saying the two, like a two-tier taxing district like Deschutes County. We've already done that. We've already defeated that in 2008. It wasn't that long ago. But everything has changed, you see, and so yeah. you, what, are you against people getting a chance to vote? What's the matter with you? No, I'm I'm for the idea of they voted, they told you what they want, now when are you going to listen? Oh, the public just doesn't understand. No, wait a minute. It's you commissioners that have the trouble understanding. We've already answered you yep. five times. Yep. It, it, you know, the, the people in the county, I have a lot of little old lady friends, and, you know, they actually have to budget for their property taxes. And, and you know, having such a substantial increase in property taxes, again, for people in the county who are not going to see, um, you know, an increase in the, the services that they aren't getting, is um, really, it's not appropriate. And I, I really resent the fact that the Board of County Commissioners is saying to the public, you don't pay enough. And, you know, they're punishing us for the actions or the inaction of the federal government giving us uh, our ONC money. A former commissioner, Dave Toller, somebody was talking to him about this and said, well, people can't afford, oh, sure they can. No, really, people can't. And once they had proven to him that some people were going to have trouble with this, mm -hmm. finally, he got, I guess he got convinced, he said, well, people who can't do that should just move. Mm -hmm. Really? That's your answer? What was it that Simon Hare said to senior citizens? They'll have to suck it up. They'll have to suck it up. Yeah. You know, there were suggestions, oh, well, you can have deferred, um, go through the deferred tax plan, yeah, but the interest rate is like 16%. You could borrow money. One of their plans that they've said, you could borrow money to pay your taxes. Now, that sounds like a brilliant well, solution. Yeah, yeah. Or one of them was is you can get a reverse mortgage. Well, reverse mortgages are very expensive, and they're only for people in their later lives. You know, it doesn't really work for people in their 60s or their 70s, you know. People could say, well, now, wait a minute. I kind of like the idea of the fact that it's only three years because we could try an experiment for three years and see how it works. So, as revealed in another meeting that we videotape, this is why they hate us, because <laughs> we videotape this and we tell everybody what they're saying and we have proof that they've said it. Mm -hmm. They're actually having a plan right now, the Chief Financial Officer, Rosemary Paget, at a recent meeting with the Board of County Commissioners in the little back room, said, now we're going to be taking a certain amount of this every year from this three-year um, uh, tax, this mm -hmm. three-year levy. We'll set it aside for the fourth year. And Cheryl Walker was like, well, that seems right. And Simon Harris says, no, wait, wait, wait. We don't talk about that. Not, I think you meant, we don't talk about that in front of this camera that's running, buddy. Yeah. We don't talk about that because people could say, now, wait a minute. You said it was three years, and this is kind of bait and switch here. I mean, he really used right. some of this language right. because you're sort of deceiving us. You're really wanting this money, and you have enough to set it aside for a fourth year. So maybe you don't need all that money? And what's this four years instead of three years bit? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. Cheryl Walker, one of her answers to all this is, well, okay, some of these numbers um, we just do not circulate. DNC, she says. She used that. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. It, it's, it's not that there isn't a need. There is a need. Mm -hmm. But I don't trust these guys. Now, why? Oh, because you're a nutcase. You don't trust them. No. I've got plenty of evidence yeah. that they cannot be trusted. That's true. And, you know, um, recently um, there was um, a couple of weeks ago, I guess, they had a um, weekly business session that dealt with just the finances of the county. Mm -hmm. And they, they passed out a graph that had um, the sheriff's budget and what his... Uh, expenditures were and you could see every year like this this past year he spent more than the year before the the that year uh, he spent more than the year before that it progressively got he spent more um, in his budget you know uh, his expenses were more and more every single year this at a time when he knew that the revenues and you could see on the graph was dramatically de decreasing that I have a problem with this, that, that you know, uh, as much as, you know, the Sheriff's Department is needed 
and, and valuable to the community is probably one, the number one thing that people want. Government has to keep you safe. The government, yeah. I have a real problem with expenditures increasing every year knowing that the revenues are going down. But, but Sandy, everybody knows that salaries have to go up, have to go up, have to go up. So why would the sheriff be blamed for not planning for that? Well, the, the thing is, uh, you know, that's my bone of contention is, you know, they want the citizenry to cough up more money, but their salaries have gone up uh, and, you know, have stayed the same or gone up. Not one single penny has been reduced for um, salaries, benefits, or retirement packages. And I have a problem with that. Um, you know, we have one of the highest poverty rates in, in Oregon. And um, uh, there's something else I wanted to tell you about that budget session. Um, I can't think of it right off. Well, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something yeah. then. I haven't said this in any meeting, and I don't think I've said it to you. If there were districts that were divided up, one for juvenile justice, a juvenile shelter, one for animal shelter, one for the sheriff, one for the district attorney, and they and each of them was on the ballot that'd be a bit cumbersome but each of them was on the ballot then the and that money was guaranteed to go only to that only to that no uh, uh, county commissioners fooling around with the money no money poured into a big vat and we'll pour it out on the floor and figure out how we want to use it no 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 it's dedicated just to that now I would vote for that every single one of them or the ones that were most important to me but this can never happen. It's it's like having a ballot where you could vote for none of the above. You know who would win every election. But they can't possibly do this because the people would be would be really faced with a hard decision. Well, we've got X amount of money. Where do I personally want it to go? That would be the way to do it in a republic, in a democracy. It, people would decide. But see, the problem is they'd actually be deciding, and then the county government would have to do that. Well, I remember what I wanted to tell you is... Um, but can't you acknowledge what a terrific idea that is first? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Um, the, the, they said at that financial weekly business session that the CFO reported that in the past year, services had gone down 60%. Now, the services went down 60%, but not one single dime was cut from from payroll, um, retirements, or benefits. And I have a problem with, in fact, they got co COLA raises. So, some Cost of, of living allowance. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, their um, salaries are increasing where when the average person in Josephine County salary is not increasing, you know, at the same rate. So I have a real problem with you know, punishing or accusing the property owner of, of not paying enough money. Look, my property taxes, you know, my total overall bur property, not property tax, but tax burden has not decreased. In fact, it has increased over the years. With less services, it hasn't decreased? Uh, no, it hasn't. I mean, if they cut, cut services 60%, um, you know, you would think that, um, you know, the property taxes may have gone down a little bit because the the assessed value has come down. I'm just talking about the overall tax burden that everybody pays. We're still paying through the nose for everything. For, it's like you know, saying gas if, it, prices. if you're driving 60% less, how come my gas bill is the same? Yeah. You're getting 60% less services. Yeah. How come our bill for that's not any less? Yeah. Who's the biggest employer? in Josephine County? I don't know, but I, I would guess it would be... Um, the government? Yeah, the, or the education system. Oh, you know? yeah. You know, the, uh, I'm not sure that government... It's one of the biggest employees, let's put it that way. Employers? Employers, yeah. 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 The education system part of the government? Well, I, don't know I wasn't that. even thinking of it that way, but yeah. I think it could be thought of. That I, I way. don't. Th I don't think government is the number one, you know, uh, employer. I don't think that's right. But well, it's, it's not. It's not. Uh, but it, but it's way gems, up there. It's not those guys. Yeah, it's it's. It's way not up first there. call resolution. <laughs> And, and, and they're making their money for for talking and 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 getting on the phone with people to get them to pay their bills. 
it, it's it's like saying, oh, the 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 transit bus ridership has gone up. What a great indicator that is. No, it's not. <laughs> People are taking a bus because they can't afford to drive. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well. Okay, so. Oh, but, but uh, yeah? before we stop, I just want to say, please vote no on this levy. <laughs> I'm, we I'm, have to do that. I'm only. Vote I'm, I'm, no on 1749. I'm not against. No, say it. 1749. I'm sorry. not against law enforcement services. I want them. Yeah. But I'm. A, I'm not going to write them a blank check. Yep. I'm not going to trust them with my money. Oh, yep. you can trust us. No, we can't. Yep. And well, now wait a minute. You know that 10, 10 cents out of every dollar. Why that's just going to go to our salaries? Well, no. I, I, I don't trust them with the 58 cents I'm already giving them. Well, why would I give them another dollar forty-eight? If we can come up with another way of doing it and take the decisions out of their hands, yeah. or if they just respect the people and the way, way they voted, maybe the people are knuckleheads. Maybe they are. Maybe I am as too. Not you, of course. <laughs> but huh? we voted. How many times do we... I said yeah. to him, why don't you just put it on the ballot every year for the next decade and yeah. it's just a continuing thing that's always on the ballot. Well, you don't understand. No, no. You're the ones that don't understand. Would you please listen to the people? No, we're going to listen to a small group of losers, the people who have always lost. Why, they're saying we need this. Yeah, but they lost the last few times. Yeah. They lost every time before. Why are you listening to them again? Well, everything has changed. No. no it You're just as dishonest as you were before. Yeah. I'm sorry. Not every commissioner has been dishonest. Not even you. No. But... They are not telling us the truth. I can't vote for that. Yeah. And, and the economic conditions haven't changed in Josephine oh, County. Oh, brother. You know, um, you know, we see businesses leave in Josephine County in droves. Uh, we are not the only county facing this. It's, no. it, and the thing is, is just all the levels of government are unsustainable. And they're unsustainable because primarily you know, salaries, benefits, and retirement packages. So, you know, um, until you address that, until you're willing to negotiate with unions and say, hey, look, um, I tried, they wouldn't even let me sit in on uh, and watch union negotiations, let alone participate in it. So um, I really, it doesn't seem equitable. Uh, um, you know, they're asking the property owners to, to keep funding this. And, cough it up once again. Yeah, cough it up. And you know what? I think, you know, we've more than reached the limit on what we're willing um, to give our, our county. Okay, so last thing. What's going to happen with this levy? Pass or not pass? I, well, it... I'm hoping that it does not pass. It w it, it, it does not pass. It will pass if the people do not get out and vote. That's the biggest fear. It's an off-year election. Yeah. If people do not get out and, and uh, once again vote no, there is a possibility that it will pass. Why do I have to keep voting again and again and because again? And keep, this, is, this is voter abuse. It is. It, um, it's because they keep wanting to ho slip it by. You know? but, but don't they have to get all those signatures from people to get oh, it on the ballot? No, they no. didn't have to do that. They no. just the commissioners put it on themselves. Yeah. We're staying out of this, but we're going to put it on yeah. the ballot. Hey, hey, hey! It's not my levy. No. It's not my, as Simon says, it's not my levy. It's just my option for the people. <laughs> care you can change the names of anything that you know manure it's still manure <laughs> you know, I don't care how you how you describe it but it's still the same thing 